Hello, and welcome to LEGO Mindstorm ZV3 Basics, more fun stuff. Now we're gonna get into a little bit advanced features here, but we'll just basically be talking about how to run simultaneous programs. And there's a couple of different ways. One is using multiple start blocks, and the other is using what's called sequence wires. And then we're all done with that, and actually we'll carry it over as we meet Mr. Elefante. Bet you can't wait. Okay, so let's say we have our robot doing this really cool line follow thing. It's just trudging along. It's on a white table or a light colored table following a black line. It's working great. And now I want to add something new as far as making it do something simultaneous. So I can throw up a, another start block up there and then add something to it. So let's throw this up here. And I want it to go, oh, straight for 10 rotations. And that is not going to work. And the reason it won't work is because we have conflicting blocks. We have steering blocks in the top program and a steering block in the bottom program. Your robot won't know which to do. So it'll basically lock up and say, I'm not doing anything. This, however, will work. As you can see, there are no conflicting blocks. So with this being a line follow, it only seems right to me that a sniffing dog is in order. Man, run for 10 seconds. Makes good sense. One of the things to watch out for when you're running multiple programs using multiple start blocks is that if you run this program from the canvas, you will only run this program. Same goes with this one. If you click here, you'll only run this program. In order to run them both simultaneously, you need to either download and run the robot separate or disconnected, or you can download and run, which will still have the same effect as running the two simultaneously. Again, with multiple programs, multiple start blocks, in order for them to operate simultaneously, you must download and run away, disconnected, or download and run while connected in order to get the effect you're looking for. Another way you can run multiple programs is by using sequence wires. Now let's say we want to do our dog sniff routine with our line follow. If you go up here, notice how that little connection point turned a blue color when I hovered the arrow over it. If I click on it and pull, left click and pull, see how this little blue spool looks like it's letting out wire? And then see how the connection point on the block turns blue? Once that happens, I can release my mouse click. And now everything is lit up, showing that a good connection has been made. And with this method, you could even take it one step further and add another line another sequence wire by doing the same thing. As soon as it turns blue, left click, grab and pull and add another set of programming. It's very important there not be any conflicting programs. The weight blocks do not conflict as they influence the blocks to their left. These blocks must not ever conflict. So just to clarify, you can have same type blocks in other strings, in other program strings. In other words, you could have a steering block in this string or a steering block in this string. The key is that they do not run at the same time. That's where the conflict happens. In other words, if I had a steering block here, you would have to make sure that these steering blocks were done with this program and met this criteria for the loop X condition before this steering block was activated. So in other words, make sure your dog sniffs a while. So one last thing about sequence wires. One of the great things is that they can be used midstream or midstring, I should say. Let's say you wanted to 
run your lights after you exited the loop there. You wanted to have some flashing lights for five seconds. And then you wanted to run straight for five rotations. Okay. You can still grab a sequence wire mid string. So as you can see, using sequence wires offers a lot of options. Be careful. You must always, always watch for conflicting blocks. If you keep an eye on that, you're in good shape. Now I have to admit that is one of the coolest robots ever. And this is the actual program that Mr. Elefante was running. Now one thing I want to point out that was done especially for this video was the weight block at the very beginning of the program. It is simply there to allow enough time for me to push the button and get my finger out of the way. So let's take some time to watch it again and we'll follow the program along with Elefante's movements. So as you can see, the program moves right along, several things ran simultaneously, and there were never any conflicts with block assignments. And even though Mr. Elefante used two large motors within his workings, they were used independently by way of the large motor block. The large motor used for his leg movements was assigned to port A. The large motor used for his trunk movements was assigned to port B. And then we had the medium motor, which was used for his head movements. And then a color sensor and a touch sensor to trigger stop actions. So as you can see, with the right parts and programming, the possibilities are endless.